Welcome back to Bluegrass on this beautiful December morning, just a few days before Christmas, so I want to wish you guys all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. Today we got a pretty fun video. Uh, it's about 40 degrees right now, but we have some really bad weather coming in tonight, so supposedly it's going to be like icy and in the single digits tomorrow, so it's supposed to start raining and then get really cold. And so one of the, the questions I get a lot uh, in my emails is, hey, Stoney, you know, when is the weather too inclement to go outside, especially too cold or too hot? So uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to work some dogs on the course and then we're going to go out back into my pre-adventure area and we're just going to take a walk and watch how the dogs do on a damp uh, 40 degree day. Okay. Then tomorrow we're going to come out and we're going to walk the same dogs when it's single digits. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, theoretically there's going to be ice. So we're going to go from 40 and damp to single digits and super icy conditions. And we're just going to kind of, um, you know, see what happens in terms of the dog's performance and their comfort level. Okay, so let's introduce our cast of characters for the video. We have Harry, a Fox Red Lab. We have Calypso, a Bahamian pot cake dog. We have Goose, an Australian Shepherd. And of course, we have uh, our uh, <laughs> mentor dogs, which are Black Labs, because all dogs want to be Labs and all Labs want to be Black. Okay, so the Black Labs will be the standard by which all other dogs are, <laughs> are judged in this video series. Okay, so nice day the sun has come out uh, so we're just going to walk some dogs work on our vocabulary work on our proprioception uh, it was kind of rainy last night it's a little damp but the course is pretty dry so uh, it's fairly high traction uh, that's one of the things you're going to notice tomorrow if it does end up icy you'll notice that the dogs struggle with the activities that uh, we're doing uh, in this video uh, in which case uh, we will uh, expect a high effort level out of the dogs but we will adjust our standards in terms of uh, objective physical performance all right let's walk Harry first Let's go, Harry. All right, so uh, for you guys who are familiar with my videos, uh, when I'm doing uh, obedience training, you know, dogs come here, and, uh, you know, one of the first things we do is we start socializing dogs with other dogs and uh, lots of people and lots of activities because, like, a dog that knows what to do but can't do those things in a wide range of conditions, uh, that's not really a well-trained dog. Okay, now, so once we start to get the dogs pretty well socialized, here. Uh, then we start to teach a common vocabulary. Uh, our vocabulary is very simple. Uh, come, like, hey, come to me. Let's go, which is what we say for heel, because let's go for a walk sounds a little bit nicer than saying heel. Hup, which is a catch-all term we use for negotiating obstacles. Easy, hey, don't knock into stuff. Like you take a little kid into the Hallmark store. You tell them, put their hands in their pockets, be easy. Okay. Uh, wait temporary pause, uh, stay, that's a long pause, and uh, the reason we say it, do it that way is because that's how I talk in real life. Okay, now, as we're walking along, what we like to do is get the dogs to kind of follow the leader. Uh, so we have mentor dogs, and the dogs follow the mentor dogs. Um, us as handlers and trainers, we also uh, take lots of turns being the leader, okay, because that's kind of an easy way to establish a natural uh, leader follower relationship with a dog okay and so you can see Harry who's been here for a couple of weeks uh, he's doing really well now one of the things that you guys that are familiar with my channel always ask you say well Stoney like I know you're out there working on vocabulary but you don't seem to be talking to the dogs a lot okay listen I talk to dogs I tell them what to do uh, in the beginning stages but as soon as I have a good foundation the time for talking is done and the time for doing has begun right it's that simple always remember that a really well trained dog doesn't do what you tell it to do a really well trained dog makes uh, situationally appropriate decisions. In other words, just like a friend of yours that you might go out hiking with or you might go to eat with, uh, you're not bossing them all day, right? So like if I take Harry out, I don't want to be bossing him, you know? I just want Harry to go out and have a good time, you know, and make good decisions. I want to know he's not going to run off, not going to knock anybody down, not going to chew anything up. All right, now here's Annie. Annie is a 13-week-old dog. She's a full sister to my dog, Mr. No Name. Come on, Annie. She's a real excitable, happy little dog, uh, pretty much immune, uh-oh, cameraman, you okay? Pretty much immune to cold weather. Now with these black dogs, everybody knows I like the black labs, um, in the wintertime, listen, they excel. I mean, they, it, it, around here, it cannot get cold enough uh, to make them not want to be outside adventuring. Um, now in the summertime, Listen, black dogs soak up heat like a sponge, and it's pretty tough on them, okay? So in the summertime, eh, we got to really, with the, with the black labs, we got to kind of structure our training a little early in the morning, a little, little later in the evening. In the wintertime, I can't even get them to go up, you know? Like, uh, see Hunter? Hunter's white. He's a little Jack Russell. Uh, and 
it, it'll be 90 degrees out here. He'll just be laying on the concrete in the sun, just hanging out, soaking up the sun, uh, you know, because that white coat ref is reflective. So one of the things for you to consider is coat coloration and coat type, okay? Now another thing for you to consider, notice how dry Annie looks, okay? And uh, we'll get some other dogs out he over here in a second. Okay, These, this dog like this, she's outside a lot. She's got, a, you know, like a lot of oil on her coat. Now, take this Australian Shepherd. Oh, go on, Annie. Who, uh, <laughs> who's a farm dog, you know, theoretically. But look at this coat. You see how her coat kind of soaks up the dirt and, and, and it's pretty damp. Okay, so you got to think about that, guys. Go out. Don't be afraid to reach down, touch your dog, get close to their skin. You know, see if like mud and dirt and uh, moisture is collecting, especially if it's snowing. If you have dogs like this, you got kind of a little bit of, you know, fine hair, like the, when it snows, if it snows tonight or gets icy, well, what's going to happen is like all around in here, um, she's going to get ice particles, you know what I mean? And then they'll kind of, you know, they'll kind of irritate the skin. So you got to watch that. You see a little dog like Hunter, like uh, Hunter, whenever uh, we're out, when we go for a walk out back, you're going to notice that when we're moving, like he's just trucking along and he's just like the other dogs. But if we stop, you know, it, it gets really cold, right? So one of the simple things to think about when you're out with your dog is just like, Number one, start with an objective evaluation of what type of dog that you have in terms of, you know, where it grew up. So we'll get that pot cake dog out here in a second. We'll take a look at her. She's a dog that, uh, you know, comes from the Bahamas. Well, it doesn't get very cold in the Bahamas, so she's probably not going to do great in the cold weather. That doesn't mean that she shouldn't go out and have adventures in the cold weather. It just means that you should structure those adventures in such a way that uh, you don't make the dog particularly uncomfortable. Okay. Now, the idea of being particularly uncomfortable uh, is related to progressive exposure. So you can even take a dog like Calypso. We're going to take her out in a minute. And uh, come on, uh, you can even take a dog like her. It's not bred for cold weather, but they get used to it. You know, do they get used to it like a lab or like a Newfoundland? No, of course not. But they do get used to it. And as long as uh, short coated dogs or dogs without double coats, as long as they stay moving, they can really enjoy themselves out in cold weather down to very low temperatures. Basically, what we do here is uh, we just get out early in the morning and we watch the dogs. You know, they're running around, they're playing, they're having a good time. And as long as they're running around playing and having a good time, then we keep them out. You know, and so dogs usually come stay here for four weeks or sometimes eight weeks um, and, and they hang out. And over the course of that four or eight weeks, they get tougher, right? And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the heat or the cold, they do get tougher. But there's, there's a limit to all that, right? So in the summertime, we have to watch the dogs that are too well insulated, right? And in the wintertime, we have to watch the dogs that are not well insulated enough. But all you have to do is be observant. You don't have to be a dog training expert, right? Okay, you know what it looks like. You know what it feels like to be cold, right? So watch your dog for those same signs. But let me caution you, just because you're cold does not mean that the dog's cold. So when I'm telling you to look for signs of being cold, I'm not telling you to look at yourself and go, well, I'm cold, the dog must not want to go outside. No, that's not true because you're probably not very tough either. Now, not only are you probably not very tough because you don't work outside, but you're also probably not dressed right. Uh, the cameraman thinks I ought to make a video about how to dress when you take your dogs outside. Uh, and if anybody wants to see that, comment below and I'll show you how I dress, you know. All right, so uh, Calypso, <laughs> who is a real character, is off somewhere. So I'm going to have to go find her and then I'll come back and we'll talk about Calypso. We'll walk her and, uh, oh, you know what? Okay, uh, come here, Blue. Oh, here we, we have a big golden retriever. And uh, so Blue is a pretty cool dog. And you might say, well, Stoney, is a golden retriever the same as a lab? Uh, no. <laughs> That's why you only see a few golden retrievers and a whole bunch of labs on my, on my channel. Let me bring him over here, and I'll show you the key difference uh, from my perspective. Now, uh, I like golden retrievers. Uh, temperament, you know, pretty easy to fool with. Uh, we don't really have too much trouble with them. Uh, they're very similar to a lab in terms of liking people. And they're very similar uh, in terms of, uh, of, you know, getting along with other dogs or... 
like, you know, I can trust this dog around any of the children that come here. I mean, he's just a great dog. Now, these Australian Shepherds, any of these herding dogs, people that board dogs a lot. Now, when I say people that board dogs a lot, I mean people like me that actually let the dogs out of their runs and they don't keep them pinned up all day, right? So they don't know, you know, if you, you're talking to a guy that just, you know, he does board and train where he keeps a dog in a crate and gets it out and shocks it or walks it, or he got a kennel and he, and he keeps a dog on a trailer all day, he might not know. But let me tell you, anybody that's around dogs that run around all the time, if they're honest with you, they don't love boarding herding dogs because the herding dogs will chase the other dogs and nip at them. And one out of every so many interactions, the herding dog will catch the other dog's flank with a canine and rip a big hole in the dog's flank. They don't even really mean to, it just happens. Hey, goose! And that's another thing. You see, like you hear all that racket in the background, right? Well. Who's in the middle of it? Goose, the herding dog. Always going to be like that. Uh, let me get over. Where can I get that camera? Let me get over here. So let me show you about this golden retriever. Well, it's not my favorite thing. Remember I was showing you with Goose where she kind of has some of that fine hair, like where she, can you see this up here? Okay, like, like, like this dog's coat, it just retains moisture. And when we go out back, uh, it gets dirt in it. The dirt doesn't want to come out and it gets stick tights in it and, and all kinds of debris. And so when I come back from an adventure, like if you have a coated dog like this, you see this right here? Come back, come look at this. Okay, imagine having that on your bottom, okay? And you went hiking, but you didn't have any shorts on. Well, guess what gets all up in your, in your business there? Uh, little pieces of stick and mud and uh, you know briars and cuckle burrs and stuff like that and so this right here the labor inputs required to watch a golden retriever for a guy that trains a lot of dogs like I do it's like maybe I don't know five times higher than these than these two labs right here okay uh, so that's something for you to consider if you're thinking about getting a dog uh, how much labor do you want to put into maintaining them after pre and post adventure you know uh, but as far as just being a cool dog golden retrievers are pretty nice you know, this guy here, he didn't have like, he didn't have the, the best early formative training. So his attention span is a little lacking. Uh, his retrieving drive isn't like the kind of labs that I like. Uh, but uh, if, if you watch my channel a lot, you know that you see tons and tons of showbread or bench bread, or what people refer to as English labs uh, here. Uh, very similar dog, you know. I mean, if I lived in a you know, if I lived in an environment where I never went out, I never got dirty, um, and I could afford to have somebody wash my dogs every week, a golden retriever might be on my list, you know. But for a working man, I'm going to stick with the black labs. Okay, now I think Calypso has uh, shown back up. So let's go over here, cameraman. We'll show him. There she is. Oh, she's a good baby. Okay, now here's Calypso. Now Calypso, she is one of my favorite dogs out here. And you might say, well, Stoney, why is she one of your favorite dogs? Uh, she's one of my favorite dogs because I don't feel pressure to influence this dog a lot, okay? Uh, these little dogs like this, these, you know, multi-generational mixed breed dogs, uh, they're almost cat-like, okay? They need, I would, I would say it like this, like, see these labs over here, this golden retriever, right? They're really dependent on me all day, dependent on me for feedback, for attention, for approval. Like, I mean, they're really needy, which makes me feel important and that's cool. But like this dog here, she's like a cat, you know? Like I come down uh, and uh, she's out here watching the other dogs and she's, you know, she can just tell she's kind of a little bit street savvy. Uh, she's, uh, come on nerd. She's plenty smart to do. <laughs> whatever I'd like for her to do. She's not too into doing what I do. It's like we have a symbiotic relationship. She's like, it's like she understands, come on nerd. She understands that I'm in charge and she understands that she has to kind of defer to me. Uh, she understands that she has to put up with these dogs that kind of aggravate her. Uh, but like, that's about as far as it goes. You know, what do you say cameraman? What do you say she's like a cat? I mean, she's really a wonderful dog. Uh, she. If, if you wanted a dog that didn't need to be babied all the time, didn't need your undivided attention, that would kind of come and go, uh, and super healthy, super athletic, uh, very clean natured. I mean, she's just, she's just awesome in every way, except, back up and show them these knuckleheads. See how these knuckleheads are just clownish? constantly like like wrestling and biting and carrying on and just doing like childish things uh, this dog I, I guess if I was gonna you know put it into to, to simple words you could understand if you've ever been around children that have an old soul 
this dog kind of has an old soul, don't, don't you think? I mean, that's what I think. I think that's the easiest way to, to explain things to her, or to you, about her. Uh, now, so, but when we're doing stuff, like, you know, she's like, cool, you know, I'll do it. Uh, it's not my favorite thing. I don't really need much in the way of pay. I don't really need any discipline. I mean, I'll do it. I understand I have to do it. But she ain't going to never look thrilled about doing this stuff. It's just something that she does to get by. And, and, and you, could, you could see why, right? If you're living on the streets, there's just lots of things that you have to do to get by, you know? And that's kind of how this dog is. You'll also notice how observant she is. When we're walking around, I hope you'll be able to see this. Sometimes she gets a little bit camera shy. She doesn't like having the, you know, the camera pointed at her, but like she takes it all in. Oftentimes she will find a high spot when we're out on our hikes. She'll get up on a log or she'll get up on a hill and she'll just survey everything. So like, you know, multi-generational street mix dogs, uh, they have much higher survival uh, instincts than other types of dogs. Like you watch my labs, like listen, they just crash around, knock into everything. It, you know, it, they jump off a boat, it jump off the four. Come on, wonder. They jump out of the uh, out of the boat, they jump off a four wheeler. Uh, this dog, she doesn't hardly ever make any mistakes. It's kind of hard sometimes uh, to remember that you have her out. You know, because she's like a ninja, always walking around, and you you'd be like, well, like where'd she go? Where'd she go? And then you just survey the area and uh, find, a, find an elevated position and like there's where she'll be. And look at her, she's kind of getting, she's kind of getting to where she's saying, okay, Stoney, that's enough. So I'm gonna let her off the leash right now. Good, very nice. But I like this kind of dog because, uh, you know, I'm in the business of influencing dogs, right? I teach people how to influence dogs. I teach dogs how to be influenced. But really what I like is dogs that, you know, don't need to be influenced uh, very much per day to be successful. And this dog, uh, that's perfect. Show them one more time, cameraman. See, look, she gets up there <laughs> and she just kind of follows them around, looks at them, sees what they're doing. Sometimes she'll kind of line them out a little bit if they start getting too rowdy. Uh, very interesting dog. Maybe one of these days I'll uh, go to the Bahamas and study these dogs, use that as an excuse to write it off on my taxes. Okay, all right, cameraman, let's, um, let's uh, head out back. We'll take a walk and hopefully some of these dogs will stay in the camera. And, uh, you know, you guys can just see what they're doing. And then uh, we'll make another video tomorrow. We'll do the same thing in single uh, degree weather uh, with ice. And, you know, that way you can kind of look and see for yourself uh, what the difference is and what's, uh, you know, maybe what to expect when the weather gets really cold uh, or like uh, the environment gets uh, kind of treacherous with the ice and stuff. Okay, so we're just going to walk around. Uh, now, one of the things you're going to notice is that the dog's probably going to be darting off into the weeds a whole lot. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to walk around. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is that the dogs be uh, darting off into the uh, brush a lot. That's because we've got a bunch of rabbits out moving around right now. I guess they're out, uh, you know, kind of get, getting full before the cold weather gets here. Uh, so, but anyway, hopefully we'll be able to see what these dogs are up to. Come on, dogs. Very nice dogs. Now, every so often, what we have to do is, as the dogs get ahead of us, we have to stop and call them back. Here, dogs! So they come check in. I say, appreciate it. Very nice. And uh, we just kind of keep walking around. Now, what you'll notice, again, like I was telling you with Calypso, uh, she has a tendency to disappear sometimes. You know, uh, Hunter, the Jack Russell Terrier, he's the same way. So if you wanted to think about that, they're off down there. Come on, dogs! If you wanted to think about that uh, in the inclement weather, that's something that you got to watch for. You know, uh, if your dog gets away from you in the cold and it doesn't have a good coat, well, you know, that could be a little dangerous. So you want to make sure you have a good recall on your dog before you go off leash uh, hiking, uh, you know, in the snow and the, uh, freezing rain and stuff. But most of the time, like your dogs are going to stay pretty close. It's just that some of them like pretty close. <laughs> it doesn't match up with your idea of what's pretty close. Okay. So the more you're out hiking with your dog and the more you're out adventuring with them, then the better you'll understand, uh, you know, like their natural tendencies in terms of uh, where they go, how long they stay gone and stuff like that. All you really need is for them to not go too far away uh, and to come back when you call them. Here, dogs! Come on! Come on! 
No name. Short Bartley, come on. Good dogs. That's very good dogs. Good dogs. And you're a good dog. And you're a good dog. Now another thing that's got these dogs tore up is I have a whole pack of coyotes that have moved in back here. And uh, so these dogs all come out and they just go crazy marking over where the coyotes have eliminated. If, uh, if we come around this curve, you might be able to see, uh, you know, my male dogs and they're, they, they're, they're, they, they eliminate wherever the coyotes eliminate. They, elim they eliminate right over the top. It's pretty interesting to watch, really. Harry, come on. Oh, you're a good boy, Harry. Oh, he's very good dogs. Oh, Calypso's a good dog. She's just out monitoring her own little routine. Very nice. And Hunter, my Jack Russell, he's nowhere to be found, which is pretty typical for him. Hey dogs, come on, come on. Oh, very good dogs. They're very smart dogs. Harry's a good boy, and George is a good boy, and Goose is a good girl. Here, Goosey Goose, very nice. Now, right here, we have a bunch of deer that uh, you hang out down around this creek. So sometimes we'll lose the dogs for a minute right here. So we gotta really be on point, keep our head up, eyes out, looking for things to go wrong. Come on, dogs. Come on, come on. Clipso, come on. Here, dogs, come on. That's some good dogs. You are very good dogs. George come checked in, appreciate that. Oh, well hello, Shogun, you a good boy. Calypso's kind of over, following along beside us in the tree line. Like I said, she's not usually too far, but she's not like too close either, you know. Goose comes and checks in. That's the great thing about the herding dogs and the retrievers is they're bred to do a complex job uh, in conjunction with a handler so they stay real close on average. Come on, come on. Oh, there comes Calypso and Hunter. They're smart dogs. Now, this kind of training that we're doing here, guys, I mean, like this is caveman level training, right? This is how the cavemen train their dogs. They just uh, went out, went hunting, went adventuring, and the dogs just tagged along. And the dogs were constantly learning by doing and learning by, uh, you know, like progressively being exposed to more and more distracting uh, and challenging environments. Come on, dogs. Very good dog. You a good dog, Harry. Oh, there's Calypso. She's a smart dog. She's a very smart dog. Oh, it's very good dogs. Uh, cameraman, should we go over here and do a brush pile challenge real quick? Let's see if anybody wants to get up on the world famous brush pile. Okay guys, for those of you who are familiar with my channel, you'll know that in my pre-adventure area, uh, I have an obstacle known as a brush pile. And uh, what we're always trying to do is encourage people to get out and like not having a training field, not having fancy training equipment, that's no excuse not to get out and uh, train your dog, help your dog develop, you know, good physical skills, good proprioception. Here dogs, 
You can look at Annie already at 13 weeks old. She is a master of the brush pile challenge. Harry, he's, uh, he's learning a little bit as he goes. Very nice, not too bad. I wonder if I can get old Calypso up here. Calypso, come here babies. And Calypso's like, uh, let me see that Stoney, I'm not sure. And remember I was telling you Calypso's kind of cat-like. Like sometimes, like she, <laughs> she just run away. Uh, but sometimes she thinks what I'm doing is very interesting and she'll come right over here and go right to the top of the brush pile with me. Uh, and then sometimes she looks at me like uh, I don't have uh, enough sense to pour pee out of a boot. It's really crazy. Oh my gosh. Uncle Stoney is still the king of the brush pile. Annie's doing well, and Harry's doing well. Oh my gosh, Calypso. Goose, what are you doing? Now, uh, back down the hill there a little bit, cameraman. You watch uh, Goose. Goose, come on, Goose. Come here, babies. Come on, Goose, you can do it. Now, Goose is a little bit unsure right now. Uh, but within a few days, uh, she'll be right up here with everybody else because these Australian Shepherds, they're very, very, uh, very, very athletic dogs, very pattern cognizant. You know, for me, as a guy that, that boards a lot of dogs, they can be a little aggravating, you know, but uh, only in terms of management. In terms of learning the material, they're at the top of the game in terms of learning the material. They're great at that. Just sometimes they're a little bit on the impulsive side. They can be a little bit bitey, uh, have a tendency to bark a little bit too much and their bark's kind of high pitched so that's weird but other than that uh, they're pretty good dogs okay so we will end the video here and then we'll come back out and we'll do the exact same video tomorrow uh, but uh, theoretically it'll be five degrees all right so i'll see y'all tomorrow